Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Wi-Fi Friends. I'm Cameron. I'm joined by my good friend John. It's hey. gonna be a doozy. Oh, it's gonna be a doozy. So this 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 episode is a is a special episode because it is the annual Comic Con episode of Wi-Fi Friends. <laughs> Um, and as such, we're going to switch some things up. We're going to start off by doing our current faves. We'll get them out of the way. We'll talk about them a little bit. And then we're going to jump right into Comic-Con stuff. And then we've got a big juicy topic to get to. So, um... Juicy, baby. <laughs> I know you're excited, but you sound fake excited. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be a kooky, crazy episode, kids. Cameron's worked 13 hours oh, today. Geez. I've worked 10 so we are just off the it's, rails. It's, it's, it's loony, but we're also like actually very excited because there's some cool shit happened this week at Comic Con, and uh, we're going to talk about oh, it. Yeah. So, John, what what have you been indulging in this week? So, um, one of my favorite things. Uh, this is actually something I've been watching on YouTube. Mm. Uh, so, the kind of funny crew I've talked about kind of funny before. Love yes. their stuff. Um, they did a show called MCU in Review. They were reviewing every week. They'd review a Marvel movie up until Infinity War. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so they they're doing it chronologically too. Mm. Um, so after that ended, they're still adding on to the show whenever a new Marvel movie comes up. But they're like, oh, we really enjoy the weekly reviews. We should do something else. So they've started recently, not recently. I think they're halfway through now. Uh, XCU in a review. Hmm. What does the X stand for? The X Men Cinematic Universe. Oh, of course, of course. X Men. Yeah. Oh my god. So it has been interesting. It's been fun. They're great guys. They got really great chemistry. But it's been interesting going back to these movies and just seeing how much the what the idea of a superhero movie is and has changed. Yeah, I mean, the X Men movies were uh, they're right there with Spider Man and and like the beginnings of that kind of. You know the the era we're living in now. Like they were the precursor to superheroes make money. You know superheroes make bank. You've got to, every studio has to have a couple superheroes under their belt. And the X Men and Spider Man were like the first of those. And like you know, uh, credit to the X Men movies. They the X Men Two especially. Like everyone always speaks about it um, so highly, and it's because it is like such a good movie. Or at least yeah, in my it's, opinion. it's funny. They haven't been as kind to these movies. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I think it's mostly just because you can see a lot of the problems and a lot of, like, they're also, like, pacing was very different. Mm. It's like, oh, wow, like, rewatching this movie, I totally forgot about this whole long scene that happens, like, in the <laughs> middle or whatever. <laughs> you know, we kind of cherry pick, you know, yeah. nostalgia the pieces of the movies that we want to remember. Mm. But then it's also great them going back to like X-Men, the last stand and just being like, wow, this is like a piece of crap. <laughs> and just remembering how bad that movie was. The last stand. It was one of those movies where like I watched it uh, at an age where I liked most things, you know, like when you're younger, yeah. you kind of anything that's put in front of you, you're just like, yeah, this is awesome. And I remember it being one of the first movies where I was like, this is boring. <laughs> like, yeah. as a kid, I was, like, bemused by how, like, unentertaining the movie was. <laughs> yeah, the great thing is they have these rankings that they do where they all do a vote of where it lands on their list. Okay. Um, and it's funny because X-Men The Last Stand is actually above the original X-Men movie. Oh, wow, really? Because it was just so ridiculous, and the action is better than those earlier movies. Yeah. And like, dude, like, they're, like, the reasoning, like, it's so interesting, because um, sometimes they put themselves in awkward spots, because one week they might rank one movie over another, but then once they get to, like, they got to X-Men, or the Wolverine, or whatever. Yes. They, that's the most recent one they did. And it's one of those things where it's like, I think it's better than this movie, which we have at number five, but it's not better than this movie that we have at number like six. It's like, yeah. Sometimes you get yeah. Into a corner with like, Oh, why do we put this? Like, cause it's majority rules. Yeah. So you yeah. have some people who it's like, well, I didn't want to put it that high. And now since you guys put it that high, we have to put this other one even higher. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's weird like that because I, I, I ran into that when I did my Marvel movie marathon, 
uh, much like you described them doing this, where like me and my friend Reese, we watched all of the Marvel Cinematic Movies uh, up and we ranked them as we went. And it was very much like that, where I would come across a movie and I'd be like, dude, I really enjoyed that movie. And I would give it a score and then I'd realize that it was the same level as like, you know, Iron Man 3, which is like my favorite Marvel movie and I'm like well it wasn't quite I am on three so yeah. I can't give it that score so like if you look at our scoreboard like there's lots of scratchings out and, and yeah. rearranging, rearranging and stuff but we kind of came down on the idea of like you just have to kind of score it in the moment and you can't judge yeah. yourself because scoring is such a flawed system like like the whole Rotten Tomatoes culture is such a flawed weird system and and obviously i enjoy it and i like it it's easy because it's like an easy simple thing but you can't really do that to a thing to a game to a movie it doesn't technically really work out you know like a a movie is such a subjective experience exactly yeah and it not even not even like you know person to person like that you can comprehend you're like oh to one person it was a 10 but day to day, the same person could give something a different score. Like, depending on what happened that day yeah. to them, what mood they're in. Like, my lecturer in uni was like, you know, you can't get beaten up if someone doesn't like your film because they might just not be in the right place for the film you made. You know? <laughs> like, it's such a complicated, fickle thing. Um, but that's that's interesting, man. I haven't gone back. Yeah, my watched... favorite thing. Sorry, carry on. Uh, I'd say my favorite thing about the show is. Um, they do these podcasts within a podcast. It was something that started <laughs> with MCU in review. Okay. <laughs> so they have like rank those abs and uh, <laughs> Nick Scarpino, one of the guys talks about wigs <laughs> because he hates wigs. Okay. <laughs> and then they always do, uh, it's called Ragu Bagu, rad guys talk bad guys, where they rank all the villains. Okay. That's cool. That's like they rank the movies. Mm. But the funny thing is, is that that, one thing from MCU in review has carried over to all of their movie reviews. <laughs> so they rank, so literally the list is now like has the villain from Solo in it and the villains from X Men in it. And it's just this long, like 20 person <laughs> list of all the villains of these movies they've seen. So they're trying to get the, the, the comprehensive, like complete villains list who's the best. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that's interesting. I like that idea. I think. It was really fun when we did the Marvel version, um, and a little while ago we we did the similar type of thing with um, the Alien movies. I love Alien One; it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And um, I've I'd never gotten through Aliens like this the second one, and as such, I'd never you know watched the third or the fourth. And just a bunch of friends were just like, dude, we should just like watch them because I got them all for my birthday one year. And I was like, let's just watch them all. And we watched them all. And it's so fun because even movies you don't like, when you're with a bunch of friends, you know, and you're talking about them, movies you don't like can still be an enjoyable experience because you make jokes. Oh, yeah, 100%. And you, and, and, and like the, the, the bad things become the good things because you start seeing them again and again and it starts like reminding you and you start making jokes. Um, but I'd highly recommend that for anyone out there who, even if it's just like, like I said, I did Marvel with just one guy, me and me and one friend were just like, let's just watch all the Marvel movies. And it, it's, I, I love movies so much and there's so many different ways you can enjoy them and like shitting on them is like one of the best ways. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, I hope you don't mind if we swiftly move on. Um, oh I, no, yes. hundred percent. I, I wanted to just quickly touch on two things. Um, the first I haven't finished yet, so I can't completely comment on, but I've been really enjoying Breath of the Wild, um, uh, the the newest Legend of Zelda game, if anyone didn't know that for some reason. <laughs> um, I've been very much enjoying it. I've been playing it very weirdly. So Breath of the Wild is such a diverse game in the way that you can play it and the things that you can do, the order, it kind of is, it gives you freedom. Um the game actually gets to a point where it doesn't even tell you to go do something specific. It just goes, oh yeah, this is kind of what you got to do, but you know, just, you know, go explore. <laughs> like it's, it's such it's an, my favorite thing. Yeah. It's such an open ended game, which I really enjoy. But what happens then is you get different styles of play. And usually how you experience these styles of play is like when I was a kid, you'd go to the, like, you know, the, the yard, the, the, the school yard uh, or break time. And you would talk to your friends and you'd all discuss how you played, you know, a certain PlayStation game or a certain, you know, Nintendo game differently. But what's happening is right now me and my wife are both playing Legend of Zelda at the same time. Not literally at the same time, but like we're both sharing the <laughs> Switch. 
and you're getting we're getting like a real like almost in real time difference of plays it's 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 bizarre like i'll be i look over at her playing it and she's in a completely different area than me <laughs> but i've got like She's got like a way better sword, but I've got a way better shield because I just happen to find the right shrine, the right but it's such a weird diverse game that you can like she can be like you know six hundred missions ahead of me, but I can just so happen to be more powerful of, uh, than her because I just so happen to find the right thing you know it's such a cool, yeah. weird way, and you get to see the difference in like play like. So shrines, I always take my time with shrines. Even if I know the answer, like if it's not a hard shrine, I'll always look in every corner and kind of look around because I want to find all the secrets. Whereas Jenny, um, for those who don't know, Jenny's my wife, she will just brute force them. She will just go like, the quickest possible way we can get through this shrine is the is the quickest possible way we can get another soul orb to get a new like stamina thing. Like that, She's just like, just brute forcing everything. And like she sees... Any new wildlife, the first thing she does is kill it. <laughs> like, that's the first thing she does. Aww. Whereas I'm like, you know, oh, dude, maybe, what is this? Maybe can I ride it? Like, what is it going to do? Is it, is it going to lead me somewhere? Like, or I see, I take a photo of it, you know? But, like, Jen is just, like, completely different. And it's such an interesting kind of experiment to, like, perform, where you're just watching two people play such a diverse game. So I'm really appreciating that about Breath of the Wild. The second thing, which is my current fave, is I finally finished this new season of Luke Cage, um, and I have decided something. I have decided that Luke Cage is our generation's Batman and Robin. Um, not the shitty oh. Batman and Robin, like, 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 uh, with George, George, uh, Clooney. I'm talking about, like, the 60s Batman, like, the 60s oh, Batman okay. show, like, <laughs> completely like self-aware cheesiness like <laughs> like Luke Cage is and I thought this was the first season but I thought maybe I wasn't sure as, as to how aware they were of how cheesy the show is but if you watch season 2 of Luke Cage I'm pretty sure I can say almost certainly the show writers know how cheesy this show is because they lean in it to, into it so hard that like it's important. Right, I'm going to spoil Luke Cage. Do you mind about spoilers? I, I don't think you did because you said you weren't going to watch it. Hello, John? No, sorry. I was trying to read my wife's face. Oh, okay. No, I don't mind. <laughs> oh, were you going to watch it? <laughs> no, I wasn't sure if we were planning on watching it or not. Okay, but, um, I won't not. spoil yeah. it. I won't spoil it if you All don't right. want to watch it. <laughs> but if... But I'll give you the out now. I'll, I'll, I can I'll just, just, say, I can... just I was just say, just go for it. Okay, I'm going to go for it. Okay, so... Yeah. There is a point in Luke Cage where um, where a gentleman shows up who is friends with Luke Cage in the comic books. I'm trying to keep this vague. Should I just go full in with the spoilers? Iron Fist? Okay, yeah, I'm going to spoil it. So Iron Fist shows up. Right. Okay. And obviously, they had those little moments in Defenders, but, but generally, Iron Fist was too busy to really hang out with Luke Cage in Defenders because it was kind of his show. It was him and Daredevil, and then Luke Cage was kind of there. But in, 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 when you come to, to Luke Cage, the showrunner for Luke Cage clearly is a huge fan of the, the Luke Cage and Iron Fist run of comic books. Because a lot of Luke Cage, even in season one, a lot of Luke Cage villains and storylines were pulled right from those comics, those Luke Cage, Iron Fist team up comics. So, now that the Defenders is over, that showrunner who loved that series gets to pull Iron Fist into his show and write Iron Fist. And the show becomes some kind of weird, uh, like, like I said, Batman 66, cheesy, it's, 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 it, there's a guy who makes merch for Luke Cage, and he literally has a shirt that says Power Man on it. But in the show, Luke Cage's superhero name isn't Power Man. So where did this shirt come from? I don't know. <laughs> But that's what I mean. The whole show is like, and it's like Luke Cage and Iron Fist are walking down the street, strutting around. And it's like, it's like, oh my God, the lines, the lines are insane. Iron Fist at one point says, man, I love Harlem. It's like the streets talk to you. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> this is the cheesiest <laughs> stuff ever. But it's, it's like, it's, it's like Marmite. It's like Marmite. It's like you either love it or you hate it. And there's something about I, uh, Luke Cage and the way that the show is just, it just embraces being a cheesy superhero show and it doesn't really, 
it doesn't it doesn't really let up like it doesn't feel embarrassed you get a lot of like shows where they try to make cheesy jokes but then they go <clears throat> you know they don't like they like try to cough yeah. it off they try to like do, do something really dark right after to like make up for it that being said I will say the end of Luke Cage is a very different story. Luke Cage season two ends on kind of a weird, crazy twist um, that isn't fun and funny and, and goofy. It's like quite, it's quite a dark twist. Um, and it was one of we've talked about this before, me and you, which, which is why I wanted to bring Luke Cage up um, and, and spoil it a little bit. It's when a show goes in a direction you didn't want it to go, but you still appreciate it for. It's like the storytelling aspect, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So, like, the show takes a twist that I really didn't want it to take, and it it, it really, really kind of bummed me out because I it, it it goes against a lot of what I like Luke Cage for, which is that cheesiness, the upbeat, fun action. Like, you know, like Flash season one compared to like Flash season three. You know, where where oh, like yeah. Barry <laughs> is like sad all the time. And not that's not the twist. Luke Cage doesn't become sad. It's a different twist. Mm-hmm. But it's similar. Oh, I thought I thought Luke Cage's um uh girlfriend, whatever, we we're gonna find out the exact day she died and we we're gonna have to <laughs> 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 We gotta save Rosario Dawson and cry about yeah, it the well, whole season. I mean I wanna save Rosario Dawson from just all of this because she's just you know running around every Netflix Marvel show she, like she's bouncing yeah. around. She's it's, tired. She's in. I'm trying to figure out. She's not in Punisher, right? That's the one she's not in. Yeah, she's not in Punisher. Okay, no. yeah. She finally got out. That was the one time she's like, I can't. I'm too busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'll put her in the second season. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I I I I appreciated how risky and how bold the the twist at the end was, and it sets up. Um, uh, potentially Defenders Season 2, because I have a little theory that I'm just going to rattle off right at the end here. Um, but but before I say that, um, but I very much was bummed out at how how dark and serious it was, because I was like, damn, because it's going to be a while now. And if we, if we might not get fun Luke Cage back, but if we do, he's going to first have to go through an arc, you know? Yeah. And, and like, I know that that arc could be compelling, but ultimately it's not the show that I was like, watching it for you know yeah which is yeah. It's, it's selfish of me to say that but considering a lot of people don't like this show and i'm one of the people that do like the show i feel like it's gonna be like you know you've already lost the people with the cheesiness and now you're losing the people who like the cheesiness <laughs> it's like really weird um so that was interesting my little theory is and this is kind of mm, maybe spoiling the series but i apologize to those um but i think there is potential for if they do a season three of Defenders after Daredevil and Iron Fist come out, um, if the next thing they have planned is season two of Defenders, I think there is very much a potential for Luke Cage to be an antagonist. Not a villain. Yeah. S- so much as like, you know, he's going around murdering people because that's not the twist. He doesn't like break. <laughs> but <laughs> he he has a an ideology and a philosophy that is going to clash with the other Defenders. And I think that's mm. quite an interesting... This is what I mean. It's quite an interesting story, but it's not necessarily what I wanted from Luke Cage, you know? Um, yeah. So that's kind of my two cents on, on Luke Cage. I enjoyed the series, and the best thing about finishing Luke Cage is that I started Glow. And I will talk about that on the next podcast, because I'm only two episodes <laughs> in, and it is fucking great. I fucking it love Glow. It is so good. <sighs> Mark Maron makes me so angry, but in, like, a good way. <laughs> oh, yeah. he's a, Mar- Mark Maron's such a dick. <sighs> okay okay we, I, we, <laughs> yeah I'm, i can't talk about it okay okay, okay. <laughs> well, i promise you i'll finish it by the next podcast i promise you um okay so let's get into it john throw me the one piece of comic book news you want to start with because i've talked a lot give me it okay all right so i want to start with well i possibly my favorite thing over comic-con weekend okay um the shazam trailer oh 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 dude yes exactly the tone i wanted Exactly. I like this little snapping thing we got going on. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Exactly the tone I wanted. Um, it's bright. The suit looks great oh, in action. Suit. It's funny. It's going to be a good time. It's not going to be like, oh, this is my favorite movie ever. But it's, it's going to be like Ant Man. It's a fun movie. We enjoy it. It's not going to, you know, rock anybody's world. I'm hoping it's going to be. Somewhere between Ant Man 
because I liked Ant Man, but it was a bit. I think the reason I'm going to like Ant Man and the Wasp more is because it feels like a more fully fledged, like they kind of have an idea. Whereas Ant Man yeah. felt a little bit lost at times. It wanted to be a comedy, but it also wanted to be like this. And the third, the third thing. act kind of just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, still not judging Ant Man. I like the movie. I really yeah. like, and I've rewatched it a couple of times. But I want Shazam to be somewhere between Ant Man, where it's like this new hero that a lot of the general public don't know about. But I also kind of want it to be a little bit, um, a little bit like young teen comedy type situation. You know, I want it to feel like you can watch this movie and enjoy it for the the characters and ignore all the superhero stuff, you know? Whereas the superhero yeah. stuff should feel fun and exciting. But I, the reason I say this is because what blew me away most about the trailer wasn't just how fun it looks for a DC movie. It wasn't just how colorful it looks for a DC movie. But how, to the fucking shot, it was so faithful to the Jeff Johns Shazam uh, origins. Now I don't know if you've read Jeff John's Shazam. It came out as a as a uh, as a. It was a backup, right? It was a backup issue to the Justice League when the New Fifty Two launched, and I love the Justice League book. Um, and I kept it for way longer than it was good. Like <laughs> it was good for about like I'd say seven issues, and I kept it for like twenty issues. I kept reading. <laughs> um, but the Shazam stuff was so good because, it, to be fair, the one thing I didn't like about the comic was Billy. But they seem to have switched him out. So it's like... The yeah, I exact... heard Billy was kind of a jerk, like, yes. in the comics. So it's it's weird, because in the movie, what it appears to be is the exact two... And I'm not even joking, like Watchmen style, to the panel, <laughs> an exact <laughs> replication of, of that story that Jeff Johns wrote, except they've switched jerk Billy out, who was in the Jeff Johns, and inserted, like, classic Billy Batson in. So, yeah. like, it's, like, the same – because, like I said, it's the Foster thing. That comes from Jeff Johns. The His best friend with the with the crutches, that comes from Jeff Johns. The scene – not even just the two characters who bully his friend. The scene where they're by the car and they bully his friend by the car. And, and it's literally – I'm telling you, dude, it's crazy. This is the most faithful live-action movie I've ever seen to a comic book. Because <laughs> usually – like I'm trying to think of of movies that were based on specific comic books. Like you could say, like you know, Batman vs Superman was kind of specifically based on you know Death of Superman. It's nothing like Death of Superman, but it takes yeah. beats from it. You know, um, you could argue that like I guess Dark Knight Rises is kind Winter of Winter Soldier is pretty. It, the story is very different, but there are very specific yeah. panels that you can tell were lifted and put straight on. One hundred percent. Like Winter Soldier, like. And then Infinity War, you could say as well, because a lot of the elements are similar. But this trailer is judging to be, like, it looks so, so faithful. It's insane. Like, the kids who are bullying um, uh, the, uh, the his, his foster brother, um, their father is, like, the main antagonist of the story. Now, I think they've obviously switched him out for... For a more comic booky uh, antagonist, yeah, Doctor Savannah. They, yeah, they've got Doctor Savannah, um, which makes sense, obviously, because in the it's a back issue in the back issue comic. It wasn't a long comic; it was just yeah. kind of you know there. Ultimately, he does end up fighting um, the embodiments of the Seven Deadly Sins, which would be interesting, but I don't know how it would look. However, yeah. based on the visual style of this movie so far. Um, I really, really think they could pull it off. And, and dude, like yeah. you said, so colorful, so exciting. And just, like, one of my favorite shots um, is, you know, when he's walking and he says Shazam, and he, the lightning strike immediately <sighs> hits and transforms him. Yes, dude. Something that's super cool that, like, I didn't like, because I'm not super smart when it comes to this stuff, but when I look at Twitter, I can read things that make me sound super smart. <laughs> um, so they do something really cool where um, he, you have the shot where you see Billy. And the symbol on his chest is right where Billy's head is. Okay. So your eye is like following, like right <sighs> when he says Shazam, it inst- like it follows up. It's so cool. Like, uh, not the best way to describe it, but it's a it cool is. filmmaking technique that's like, you could tell a lot of care was put in this movie. Zachary Levi, just a charming man. I love it. He feels so much like Captain Marvel when yeah. he's stealing the. Uh, well, he's not stealing, but when he's taking the beers, 
and he's just like <laughs> oh they were like grape sodas i think like i, in, I think in... so but still from what I remember, in the comic, that scene, he takes beers because they, they, they try to, beer. they're taking advantage of the fact that he's an adult. And, and one of the things that they do is he buys beers for him and his friend uh, from his foster brother. And I love that scene in the comic. And I thought it was like, dude, everything every, from the train, the train. But Jenny was watching it with me. She'd seen it before and she knows how much I love Captain Marvel. And yes, I will call him Captain Marvel. I, I, I'm sorry, but like, that's how I, you know, grew up with him. Like, yeah. so. So, so he, she knows how much I love Captain Marvel, and she's like, "You gotta watch this trailer." I know you don't like watching trailers, but you gotta watch it. So she sat me down and she showed me. And like when the train scene happened, I, I was just like, I was like looking at it, and I was like, "Dude, they did the," tra-. and then there's the, the Rock of Eternity, and oh, oh and my god, Shazam at first is so I saw cool. it on my phone, and then I got home and I watched it on the TV, and it look, I mean, it just looks so much better. You just see so much more detail. Yeah, and I was just like, man, this is great and that scene plays very well where he's like he laughs at his name and he says it yeah and so the flight tests and the super strength tests <laughs> I, i'm just really excited for this movie i think it's gonna be great it is what he's like what does he say he doesn't say bullet it's friend he says bullet you're but bullet it, immunity immunity <laughs> Dude. I a dork says bullet immunity this and it's all and like obviously um you probably tell this from like the it's a pretty not not like cliched but like it's a pretty easy spot but his foster family are obviously they're the marvel family you know yeah there's there's miss marvel you know there's there's and 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 i oh dude i just there's so much potential so much potential for this to be like a franchise but um, wait so what the interesting thing is so we saw this trailer yes you know, we know Mark Strong, Dr. Savannah's in it. Mm-hmm. There is still that looming cloud. I'm not going to call it a cloud. More like that thought, you know, that everyone kind of put to the wayside because nothing's really happened with it. The Rock Black Adam? Yes. Remember that was a thing? That is still a thing from what I can... It's still happening, right? And it's supposed to be his own movie? It's, yeah, he's... So they're doing kind of a... And we'll get to this, um, kind of an unbreakable situation, where they do okay, a movie yeah. about the hero, they do a movie about the villain, and then they do and a... And then they cross over. And then they cross over. Or, another thing that we'll talk about, hopefully, is, another example of that, is the Godzilla situation, where they do oh, a movie yeah. about one, a movie about the other, and then a movie about the meeting. Um, okay, so Shazam, we both enjoy, we both like. What trailer do you want to talk about? Most? I want to go DC to DC. I want to talk about a trailer that I thought was going to be shit, and I thought it was going to be shit... Right up until I watched it, uh, even when I read that you liked it because you compared it to the Green Lantern movie, and I want to get on about that because that's an interesting comparison. Yeah, I was blown away by the Aquaman trailer, and 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 not by him specifically because he kind of acted like he did in Justice League. We both yeah. loved him in Justice League. I thought he was so fun, such a fun character. So I wasn't blown away by him. But this movie does not, again, just like Shazam, it does not look like a DC movie. No. You've got Black, a- um, Black, Black Adam. Oh my God. Black Manta. <laughs> you got Black Manta with the almost Black Which Panther looks looking dope. costume. It looks so dope. It looks so cool. You've got, um, Mera in the bright green. Like, her it- hair is so fucking red. Oh. I love it. I don't even know. I I said blood orange or blood red, and my (laughs) wife's like, that's not blood red. That is like, I don't even know how to say it. I'm like, it's just red AF is what it is. It's red. the color they they bought. It is. It's red as... I I want to... Please, please talk to me about this trailer because we... We both liked it, but you you compared it to the Green Lantern movie, and I want to know what were kind of the things you picked up on it. Um, so the thing is, so for those of you who don't know who weren't around the internet when the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie came out, um, me and Cameron liked it. Oh yeah, and I still like it. <laughs> I still like it. I still don't think it's like the worst thing ever. I no. still say if that movie had came out a couple of years earlier, we would have said it was all. We would have all been like, that's that's a good movie for yeah. for a comic book movie. You know, I think that if it came out um, after a couple of movies that we got 
from DC, I think people would have been like, nah, it's not bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, if that had came out after, like, Batman v Superman, people would have been like, this is the greatest thing ever. Look, it, it's funny. It's got color. So, you know, people whatever. sad. <laughs> but that's the interesting thing. That's the super interesting thing about this whole situation. Get off on a little tangent. Okay. Is that the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie was what everyone wanted from DC movies. It, it's very colorful. <laughs> It's yeah. kind of funny. It's not too doesn't take itself too seriously. Mm. It's got some moments that are like, okay, that's a little dumb, whatever. Yeah. But that bombed. Everyone talked shit about it. So DC decided they thought they'd course correct and they went the opposite direction. And it's interesting because so when I remember those trailers, okay, the original Green Lantern movie trailers, yes, the ones we we I just, about. Yeah, you've got so much of the same like. The DNA is in this Aquaman movie. Okay, you've got a very likable lead character. Yeah. Um, you get the shots of the the CGI filled like mystical world of him seeing for the first time. Oh um, yeah, I get when he goes to Oa. Like, the, yeah, exactly. You've got the the funny like the one liners like it just it feels so much like that movie because it's I feel like it's gonna follow about the same like he's gonna spend some time on the surface. Go to underwater, spend the rest of the the ending climax is gonna be back on the surface. And so it's interesting, it's got yeah. the same plot DNA. The one thing I'm I'm not worried about. But it just seems like a lot is going on in this movie. Oh, oh my god, yeah. Oh my god. And gosh. so I'm a little scared because it's like, all right, you have to overthrow your king brother. There's also Black Mantis doing stuff. <laughs> There's also a giant war with sea monsters. When I saw Black Manta I was like, oh shit, is this a sequel? Or did we get two trailers? <laughs> did we get the trailer yeah. for the sequel as well? Because so much of the beginning of the trailer was based on Orin that when yeah. it showed Black, pa- Man- <laughs> Black Panther, yeah, Black Manta, when it showed Black Manta, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot, he's a villain too. Like, what the heck? <laughs> like, is this a three hour movie? Like, I, I, I mean, I'd be cool with it, but. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how they I think Black Manta is going to be. If I can, like, pitch what I think the plot's going to be, mm. is that King Orin wants to start a war with the surface world. Yeah. So what does he do? He's going to hire Black Manta to start some shit. And so Aquaman's going to have to fight King Orm and then go stop Black Manta from doing some sort of terrorist attack Ooh. that would provoke the surface world to attack Atlantis also. That's interesting. I would assume that Black Manta would be kind of a... Like a killmonger type a mercen- character. Yeah, sometimes he's a mercenary. Sometimes he's all, I hate Atlantis. I hate mm. the underwater world. Um, the thing is, is what kind of sucks is I don't think they're going to tie those two together as like deeply as ha- they've been tied to before. Yeah. Because like the whole thing of like Aquaman accidentally killed Black Manta's dad <sighs> yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think we're going to get any of that, which kind of sucks. But hey, everyone seems to have great chemistry. The Atlantis stuff looks, it looks like a fun ride. So, can I tell you what I what movie I got vibes from when watching the trailer? Yeah. And, and and now that you've explained it, I understand why you thought Green Lantern. I thought of Black Panther, which might be why mm. I keep getting it mixed up. And it, it, it came from, it started the scene, like you said, when he arrives in Atlantis. But unlike, you know, you thinking of, you know, Ryan Reynolds going to Owa, I mean Hal Jordan. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was seeing it as like, you know, when they burst through the trees and they go to Wakanda and like you yeah. see Wakanda for the first time, it was very reminiscent of that for me, uh, where it's like, you know, he's been off in his, in the Justice League adventure, very much like the Winter Soldier was for Black Panther. And now he's coming home to his universe, you know, and he's introducing yeah. you to his universe. You know him, but you don't know his universe. Um yeah, I I kind of this is what my thing is. I think this is how they would juggle the now obviously this is DC. Maybe the answer is they don't juggle the the villains well and it's a complete mess. Yeah. But if they do end up juggling, I think that it might possibly go this way. I think that the war scenes that we're seeing, I think a lot of them are probably flashbacks because yeah. If you remember, that's kind of a DC thing to put things in trailers that look awesome. And then, you know, they are awesome, but they end up being either, you know, 
Justice League, you've got the flashbacks to the Atlantean teaming up with the Amazons against, you know, Darkseid's armies. Um, in Batman vs. Superman, we've got, like, the the dream sequences, you know, with the, yeah. um, what are they called? The Darkseid's demons. Um, um the, um, Parademons. Uh, Parademons, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, with even way, way back in Man of Steel. Man of Steel, one of my favorite scenes in that movie, and I still think it works in the movie, is with all the skulls, you know, where he's sinking oh, yeah. into all the skulls. And, like, I think that works in the movie, but in the trailer it was a little bit misleading because it was like, hey, you know, you showed us this, and then it ended up just being, like, a weird dream sequence, which I appreciated in the movie, but in the trailer it's like, what's going on? Um, I think that might be what's happening in this, because, there, like you said, there is so many big war scenes that are, like, in different locations some of the times. Like, some of them will be, like, underwater, some of them will be on land. So I think, yeah, there's a potential to be, like, one big war scene in the present day, but I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't cut back to maybe a war with the surface. The reason why the Atlanteans regret, you know, regressed to the sea and why they hid in the sea and why they... They close themselves off or whatever. It reminds um, me a lot, which is interesting, because James Wynn directed the best Fast and Furious movie, Fast Five. Um, oh, yes. I, and I that do one, enjoy that movie. And that one plays with the multiple antagonists, because The Rock and his team are technically antagonists. The, the police um, but then you force, also, yeah. Yeah, then you also have the cartel people who are the, the main antagonists. Yeah. So, I mean, he has a history of making stuff like this work. He has a history of being a fucking good director, though. Like, yeah. Star Trek Beyond is the best Star Trek movie since Wrath of Khan, in my opinion. Like, and I'm a big Star Trek fan, but Beyond felt like a really long episode of the original series. It was, like, super yeah. fun. It didn't take so seriously. And it looks like he's bringing that energy that he brought to Fast Five, that he brought to Star Trek Beyond. He's bringing it to the DC Universe. He's not worrying about silly things that they worried about in Justice League, where they have to make a bubble to speak underwater. Like, yeah, <laughs> he just threw that out. He was like, "No, I'm not going to do that." It's like, a, it's not fun, you know. <laughs> and Atlantis looks super like you've got like turtle car things and like all this like crazy ridiculous stuff that I'm Did like, you all notice right. They have so much stuff, right? And again, this is again maybe it's a bad thing because there's so much stuff. But going back to the Shazam trailer, DC being more and more faithful to their comics, you know, something Marvel's yeah. been doing for a while, like pulling from the comics, instead of like treating the comics like these dirty things that you got to like pretend didn't exist. Like Marvel's been embracing the comics and figuring out how they can translate the screen. I feel like with Shazam and now with, you know, what well, it goes back to Wonder Woman, actually. Wonder Woman is super, like it really like took yeah. from that Amazonian culture. Um, but like with Shazam and now with Aquaman, you get to see the trench. You get to see yeah. the creatures from the trench, oh my God, which is that like scene one of the so good, dude. It was one of the coolest new Fifty Two books, the trench, because it was such a interesting idea of like these creatures that he can't control. You know, yeah. these creatures that are so mindless. They they're like the things that kill his son way back in like the Peter David run. Um, yeah, and I was like, you get to see the things from the trench, and then you get to see like these different races under the water. Like there was like these. Oh, that was my favorite thing. There's like these mer people, like ah, oh, dude, like this is. Uh, I feel like this is the slow, like Marvel exploded with Iron Man one, whereas I feel like DC it's the slow grind. You know, the, yeah. they begin at the bottom and then they get Wonder Woman, and then they get hopefully Shazam and Aquaman. You know, and these like they're slowly building up to their universe being, you know, tip top. They're like learning from their mistakes, and I pray, dude, I pray. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to be. It, it, it looks fun though. Like, and I, I yeah. wanted to. Let's ask not talk you, about the Joker movies because, like, that gives me less and less hope for what they're doing. <laughs> I don't but think everything else. Yeah, I, I mean, we. I won't make past judgment until we get some sort of trailers. I know there are some that are existing inside canon and some that aren't. Um, we've got a a, a, a Birds of Prey movie coming out. Um, I'm cool with that. No, nope. the cool idea of a Joker movie just makes me want to vomit. Um, so <laughs> it's cool. It's great. All right. What's the next one you want to talk about? If you have any oh, uh, um, comic stuff. Uh, part of me wants to talk about the Titans trailer. I don't have a lot to say about it, though. Oh, Murder do. teens doing weird stuff. Fuck that, man. It's really, like, weird, and I don't love all the designs. I am such a... I'm torn, dude. You know how much I wanted to make this fucking movie. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm torn. I um, I'm glad they're getting a show. I really am. And honestly, like, if Flash has proven anything, it means that just because you have a TV show doesn't mean you don't get a movie, you know? Yeah. So maybe we will get... Because my, my dream is to have, you know, Teen Titans go, and then the original Teen Titans are coming back as well. Um, apparently, they've been teasing that for, like, two years. But, like, you know, the, the Teen Titans, those yeah. ones. They've been teasing <laughs> them coming back. Then you've got the new, this Titans show. Um... But I just want them to. I just want to have loads and loads and loads of different versions. And but the one thing I wish is that they just switch the team up. I mean, like there's been like a I million different teams. We have got like... Young Justice coming back, but we'll. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, right. Give me so, what. What do you think of the Titans trailer? You go first. Um, at first I want to be like super cool, reserved judgment because like I want to do this new thing on the internet where I don't jump to conclusions all the time and I. <laughs> like you know i want to be like kind of like all right let's just wait and see because i've had that bite me before yeah. where i've like jumped and been like okay well maybe it's not so bad but my gut reaction to this is that's not dick grayson that's not how like that's literally the reason jason todd is a character is so that we could have that type of robin um heck even damian wayne you know but um so i <laughs> the robin stuff upsets me the I know this is just jumping to conclusions, but like normal goth girl Raven is kind of upsetting because she seems like every troubled goth girl in every CW show I've ever seen. Mm. Um, I don't love Starfire's hair. That's a weird one, but like, okay. you know, and like, I don't, I hope she's still an alien, but I don't know if she's going to be an alien. Beast Boy looks fine. I actually like yeah. Beast Boy. Yeah. I think it looks great. Um, Hawk and Dove, why the fuck are you guys here? Either way. <laughs> Is, the, is Hawk even in the... I didn't see him. I don't think... I don't think you, I, no, we don't... We see Dove. And yeah. they're weird, like, Talon knife things. Okay, whatever. It's like, dead um, pulling it up. <laughs> yeah, it just reminds me a lot of, like, the Suicide Squad movie. It looks a lot like that movie. It seems... Mm. The general, like, Raven's magic reminds me a lot of Enchantress's mm. magic. Um, And fuck Batman... I, I I wrote a tweet that I found hilarious. <laughs> it's like, uh, it says, "Fuck Batman, fuck your cave, <laughs> fuck your butler." <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. Um, so those are my thoughts. I I don't know. I want to reserve judgment, but my gut instinct is this is like the ex exact antithesis of what any single person in the world who's been commenting about DC Entertainment has wanted from them. I, um... Wow, that was, of, that was a lot. No, dude, that was concise. I, I, was to... I liked it. I liked it. Um, I'm grinning right now because we're going to disagree on the weirdest shit. Are you a <laughs> fuck that man? We've, 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 got, we've disagreed on some, you know, you know, things over the time, and we, we always come to amicable conclusions, you know, except for when I said that... It, my hero academia was fine and you threatened to kill me um well that's because you're a piece of shit who's wrong so <laughs> i don't love this trailer there are a lot of things i don't like a lot of things that you don't like i don't like but i will say the thing <laughs> this is so weird the thing i liked the most was rob <laughs> interesting i like that guy i think he looks like a good robin i I've always had a weird, well, not personal relationship, um, yeah. but like reader relationship with Dick Grayson, because when I jumped onto the Batman anime series, he was Nightwing. Yeah. Um, when I jumped into comics, uh, it was Damien. Like when the first time I really started reading any Dick Grayson was when I picked up Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin. And he was Batman. So he's never really been Robin for me. Um, he's always been this other thing, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, you know, he's been Robin in, in things. I've seen him as, as Robin. I've read comics where he was Robin. But generally, you know, when I was reading comics, he was always a bygone. And it was either, you know, him and Batman had patched things up or in the case of the animated series, which I would argue is like a big influence for a lot of people you know, our age as to what Batman yeah. is. He didn't like Batman. Like, if if you remember the Nightwing days, he doesn't like him. He really doesn't like Batman. And it 
the reason he becomes Nightwing is because he gets annoyed at, at Batman. So this, to me, felt like we were beginning to get Nightwing. You know, I feel like it would be very... Um, it would be. It would be. It wouldn't surprise me if if he was Nightwing at the end of the season one of Titans, like. And it was. I don't know. It was something about the one thing I will agree with you is like why isn't this Jason Todd? Is when he starts breaking people's necks. I don't think he is actually breaking their necks, but like when he stabs the guy with the R, I was like, oh, okay, that's he's not like really shooting people. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's not Dick Grayson. Now again. Dick Grayson isn't a real person, so I don't have ownership of oh, what yeah. he's like. But, like, my Dick Grayson wouldn't do that. But he definitely would say, fuck Batman. Like, that felt like... That line, I don't know why, but it really resonated with me. And I knew it was I coming because it was... That line. People have been ragging on this a lot because of that line. I don't hate the line. Yeah. I think if we do go the direction you're saying, the problem is, is that this Robin doesn't feel like he's had a history with Batman. The, yeah, and that's and it kind feels of... more like a Kid Flash New Fifty Two situation where he just doesn't like. If I remember correctly, he doesn't like the Flash because he doesn't want to be associated with him. Not that they've ever actually worked together. Yeah, well, um, again, it's been a while since I read Titans, but I did really like that Kid Flash. But yeah, he he just kind yeah, of. Yeah, I think at the beginning like... it was just like, no, I'm the Flash. Like that's my nickname, and and they're like, no, you're Kid Flash. He's like, no, I don't want to be Kid Flash. Like or like Superboy. Original Superboy, like when he yes, first showed very, up. Yeah, original Superboy was was like that where he was like, where he's like, Superman. call me Superman. <laughs> but yeah, so if um, I think I, if they do go that direction with him becoming Nightwing and him having had a history with Batman, yeah. um, I just wasn't sure because it was weird how the trailers plays. It doesn't seem like he's been Robin for a long time I don't because know. He's still like recently, you know, his parents' death is still weighing on him a lot. And so it's like, <laughs> I mean, obviously, the, okay, their death will weigh on him along, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean. Not to get too real, but like, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, all right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. This is, I don't want to upset you on a podcast. Um, <laughs> you get what I mean. You get what I mean. The scenes with it his feels parents. Fresh. It feels fresh. There yeah, but I mean, Batman has never gotten over his parents' death, and like, that's he, why he's a crybaby whiny face. Yeah. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is so much darker than people realize. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> oh, you're a very, very good friend that I can make these jokes. And um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to Teen Titans I um I liked Robin I think that he has been Robin for a while but I, I, I again like you said reserve judgment there's no way to know that from a trailer like they don't mention yeah. it he doesn't go after five years I've had enough <laughs> you know yeah. um, oh they fuck could... Batman specifically after five years of hanging out <laughs> he looks like 18 from because yeah. he's not it's not the Teen Titans it's Titans which is a very clear distinction in the comics like they call the Titans yeah. Titans when they're like 18 um and for all well, we know, obviously this is a universe that they they ask where's Batman, so they're used to seeing those two together. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Context um, but I I don't know. It, 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 again, it would be weird, like you said, it'd be weird if he's been with Batman for a year and he's already like night winging it up. Um, but in my mind, he was just you know he's been bat Robin all his life. Like that incident, you know, when the original comics happened when he was like what nine, like he was like, super yeah. young. Maybe they like age it up to like thirteen, twelve. I don't know. Um. But then we get into what really impressed me and then completely lost me by the end, which was uh, Raven. Because when Raven first shows up, yes, I was super bummed that she didn't have the diamond. But again, I can get over shit like that. I can get over costume choices because, you know, people sometimes acquire their costumes over time. You know, sometimes they're not really doing... It doesn't make sense for them to show up in their costumes. But when she shows up... She goes straight to Robin and she's like, you're the guy, I need to talk to you. I had a vision, which started to hit me in the Marv Wolfman, like, heart. You know, like, I fucking, I love Marv Wolfman. He created the Teen Titans. He, he is a big part of a lot of heroes that I love, like Deathstroke, you know, that's Marv Wolfman. Like, he, he's a big, big influence on me. And his whole Raven story was he, she forms the Teen Titans because she comes to Earth 
looking for help against Trigon. And she gets turned away by the Justice League and she goes, Robin, you need to help me. And that's how the Teen Titans get formed. You know, they all they all come. And it feels like that's what's happening here. There's no team. Raven turns up. And I know the Trigon's the bad guy because he's been cast already. Um, so I was in. When I, when I saw Fuck Batman and when I saw her being like, I need to find Robin. I was like, this is this is Marv Wolfman's Titans. This is perfect. Then, stuff started to turn sideways. She starts saying, like, talking about her mother. Saying there was no, that her mother doesn't believe in magic. And I was like, okay. Like, because Raven's mother is a huge, huge part of her origin. Yeah. Like, and, her, and Raven's mother being a devout, like, cultist and then being tricked by Trigon. But okay, I guess, you know, you don't do that, which is arguably one of the most interesting aspects aspects. of Raven's character is that she was, like, she's the product of one of the most awful things ever, you know? Um, But okay, that's fine. I get it. You don't want to deal with, you know, demonic rape in a a TV show. That's fair. Um, And and then, okay, so maybe maybe she just has, like, like a mum. You know, she just has... Maybe it's like her storyline is what her mum's storyline is, which she has like a you know a bad bad relationship with her parents and she runs away, but she just so happens to be Raven instead of Raven's mum. Again, over that, skipping ahead in the trailer, we see the last shot where Raven's demoning out, and there are so many issues I have with this, John. You can hear me squealing in my chair. I <laughs> I, I think you can guess some of the issues. Number one, it looks terrible. Like, mm, the CG yeah. is awful. It looks like a fan film that was made in 2007. <laughs> There's a fan film that was made in 2007 about Raven that is better than this. Then, number two, like, completely missed the opportunity to do the four eyes. Why yeah. wouldn't you just do it? Like, who are you making this show for? You're making people pay £7 a month to watch only DC shows and movies cater to dc fans like why would you not cater to dc fans <laughs> that's fuck? my interesting thing about this whole situation a um the tv show lineup they have i feel like it makes sense for this show to be more younger friendly and then doom patrol to be the harder the more mature one and then yeah. swamp thing to be the even more mature one yes yeah, so um like but whatever bad. you know you do you but it's like 80 dollars a year it's fucking crazy, dude. And it's and only for, DC. For that, and not even, like, you don't even get the whole Marvel Unlimited thing with all the comics. Mm. They, like, put up comics every month or whatever, and then they take them away. Mm. So they, like, only put certain things up, and it's like, why don't you just give everyone the whole catalog? Yeah. Because you're paying, like, it's not, like, for just DC comic. <laughs> I need, you need to give me all the DC things possible, like... Like, I don't know, it just doesn't entice me to go out and get it. They're competing with the closest competitor I can think to, of, because the Marvel thing is only comics, right? Yeah. Am I correct in saying that? The closest thing I can think of is the WWE app. Yeah, like, yeah. That is, network. and like, imagine if you got the WWE act, and there were like three matches you could watch, and they would switch yeah. them out every month. <laughs> like, how <I'm> fucking yeah. <laughs> Or they're like, here's all of our, here's original, here's some original shows, and then here's like a random SummerSlam (laughs) match that you can watch. (laughs) Like, it wouldn't work. You need to just unlock the floodgates, which maybe that will eventually happen, but just as a, as their, this is our opening shot, this is going to get people to to give us, I don't think they should have gone with the Titans trailer, because... They should know, they should be smart enough to know what the conversation has been with their media. And to yeah. come out the gates with a dark and gritty re- rehash of a show that most people know, or uh, of, of a property that most people know through a children's cartoon, yeah, is not the best look because it just feeds into those arguments. You know, it, it t- could be good, it could be great, but it's just... As a marketing strategy, I don't know what they were thinking. I know, and if they were going to go dark, right? If if for some reason they have a good, good reason to go dark, then go dark. Like, don't... Don't... And this may not be... I don't know what's politically correct anymore, John, so forgive me. But don't pussyfoot it, you know? Like, like just go dark. Like, 
use the storyline that is dark. The Marv Wolfman, like, Raven's mother gets inducted into a cult and, like, and is the is the child of a human and a demon and, like, I, I, I just don't understand. What is this? Sh- I, this show doesn't feel like it's for me, but it also doesn't feel like it's for the general public. And if you can't make a Teen Titans show for me, then, like, what are you doing? Because what they should have done is they should have released two trailers. They should have released this trailer, and I would have been disappointed like I am now, but also a little bit excited because there are little bits, you know. And then they should have released Beast Boy's Guide to the Teen Titans, where it's just Beast Boy yep. sitting in a room. We get to know that actor, see if he has the chops to play, you know, the Sarky, you know, Beast Boy that we all know and love. And just be like, hey yep. guys, this is my new TV show, uh, Teen Titans. It's about a chick. She's real cute. And I got a friend called Star. And Robin's a real mean guy. Like... I, I don't know who this show is for right now because I don't know who they're marketing it to. And, and like, and, That's and, the weird thing is I don't know who this show is for. I feel it, like what they should have done is just they are released the Young Justice trailer. Just They should have just been like, hey, here's Young Justice. Here's the price point. Here's what you're going to get. Yeah. And then maybe save Titans for a little bit later down the road. I just don't think as an opening salvo, mm. this was the best look. If anything... If they had been like, here's the Shazam trailer, and by the way, this is our new streaming site where you, if you <laughs> like that, you can see our new original content that we're going to be making. Yeah. You know, it just, it doesn't seem great from a marketing standpoint, but I feel like, you know, I don't, do you have anything else to say about Titans? I just keep going back to the eyes. Like, who's yeah. making this show? Do they know? Because it doesn't matter what incarnation, comic books, Jeff John's, uh, you know, like it doesn't matter who you are. The eyes are always they're one of the most iconic ABC's things. It's only going like five percent, you know, demon out, I and guess then so, like but later like, on, it's we'll the get, last like, shot of the trailer. <laughs> like it's the last shot of the trailer. Right. It's so weird. Why does a Beast Boy turn into anything in this trailer? Like, yeah, it's it doesn't. Isn't make that weird? Sense. He's got a he's yeah. got a, he's got his costume from the comics, which is awesome because none of the rest yeah. of them do except for Robin and Hulk. Actually, no, I'm not gonna rag on the costumes. I'm just pissed about Raven not having the diamond. But like, but why doesn't Beast Boy turn into anything? Like something simple that's not like a spoiler, like just anything. Maybe even we just see so like it like begin green. to turn. Yeah, or even just like instead of showing Beast Boy, showing a green animal. That would be cool. I'm starting to worry. Is he just Beast from X Men? Like, <laughs> I don't think they're. I don't think they're that dumb. I don't know. They didn't do the eyes, John. I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things to be mad about, Ken. I know. Fuck Batman and fuck DC. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, hey, but at I, least Aquaman did say fuck fish. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I um, cautiously optimistic. I really like that they're doing Marv Wolfman's story, but and 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 uh, as far as Starfire goes because she's really the only one we haven't talked about much. Um, yeah, I'm open to it. I don't really care what Starfire looks like. What matters to me is her character. I love her. I don't know why you humans act so prude. I don't know why humans are so, you know, like because because her race is very open and forthcoming and 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 very positive. And, like, it'll be interesting to see if they go that route. Because that's kind of what I love about Starfire's character. Plus, yeah. interesting that we she have... She did kind of murder a whole bunch of dudes, though. Sorry, so... sorry, sorry, say that again? She did kind of murder a whole bunch of dudes, though, so we'll see. Yeah, that is true. Um, interesting that we do have a weird, like... I'm assuming friendship between Raven and uh, Robin happening. But we don't get any interactions between Raven and Beast Boy... And we don't get any think, interactions between Robin and Starfire. Like I think that was smart. Actually, honestly. Okay. Um, I think that was a good, good plan, a good play, because we can hopefully, if they're smart, fall in love with their platonic friendship and then see that you know them. But also, if you remember in the original the Teen Titans TV show, there, there was not overstated, but there was some like they had a connection. Oh, definitely. There's, there's that. There's in early scenes, uh, early seasons of Teen Titans. There is that kind of like um, they bond over how kind of dark they, their backgrounds both are. 
but ultimately the message of that kind of i fucking love that show the message of that kind of relationship is like you need someone positive you know you need the balance yeah there and like it's the reason that they don't work so it would be cool i would appreciate that if they they kind of tease that kind of like mm, robin and they have a lot in common but then ultimately beast boy and starfire bring you know the best out of them um yeah. or alternatively you know uh Robin and Beast Boy. You're, 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 <laughs> just saying. This show like, is not ballsy <laughs> enough. As much I as I would love no, it, they dude. are Okay, not. can I bring? Can I bring up? Can I? Can I? Is it my go yet? Can I? Because I'm very yeah, excited okay. about something. I'm sad that we talked about one of my favorite comic book teams, but uh, arguably my favorite superhero teams, and I, I wasn't happy. But now we're going to talk about something I am excited about, which is a Batwoman. Oh, oh my God, I love Batwoman so did much. Did we get any footage, or did they just? We didn't get announce. anything. We didn't get okay, anything. Didn't... We didn't get nothing. <laughs> we didn't get nothing but a name. <laughs> but okay. I don't care. It's the first, and yes, I guess technically you can consider Legends of Tomorrow as like a LGBT led a super show. inclusive super inclusive show yes but like, right. like sarah is is technically the main character but it is a team show whereas first lesbian superhero to have a tv show and my god i am so excited i love batwoman so much and like i really 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 think that this can revive my love of of the cw because there are things that they do well and there are things that they do awfully and I think that they can really focus up and they've got a female showrunner for this and I, I just, I want them to nail this. I want them to nail Batwoman. I, I well, really... I mean, they've been wanting to do something Batman related for the longest time. That's what they tried to do with Arrow is just make mm. it a Batman show, so. Uh... <laughs> it's just such a simple formula. Like, it's, it's yeah. you get her father and you get her and you've already cast... Sawyer, she's been in Supergirl, so let's bring her over. Like, like, how cool would that be? So, which do we know anything about? Because we, this is a question that we have to ask, which I do love. Um, which Earth is she? Hmm. Would it is be... she her own universe, or is she in this Arrowverse, or is she in the Supergirl? I don't Honest... think she'd work necessarily in the Supergirl universe. Do you think so? Because my idea was to kind of populate populate that earth out a little bit more because mm, there's yeah. no one there yeah like, true it's just her and like <laughs> jimmy olsen's shitty costume because <laughs> because we know this is kind of funny because like it shows how too much cw i watch we know for definite that batman exists in supergirl's earth yeah and we superman know, we know for definite yeah obviously superman is in it and we see him and we you know we know him but we know for definite that batman exists and that he operates there but there has never been an exclusive, like, Batman exists in Arrow, uh, yeah. or Flash. They have mentioned, you know, snippets. Like, Bruce Wayne exists. We know that Bruce Wayne exists, because he's been, he's been mentioned. But they've yeah. never said Batman. You know, they've never said the guy who dresses as a bat. I don't think so, anyway. So it would no, be really cool to have Supergirl have some people that she doesn't have to cross dimensions to hang out with, you know? And, yeah, that would be nice. And dude, what the fuck would you give to see a world's finest? Oh god, that would be great. Hey, and then we... also, you sold me on seeing Maggie Sawyer again because I love that actress and I thought oh, she was amazing. Definitely. She was I'd great. I'd be sad that she's leaving Alex, but like, you know, I mean, it's okay. Like, I know they're never gonna get together. It's fine. I mean, how much of Supergirl have you watched? Um. <laughs> okay, so I'm like midway through this last season, so I, I'm. So you know that... I know that they... No, that's what I'm saying. They're never going to be together. Oh, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I know that okay. they broke up. Yeah, okay, we've cool. talked about I this just, before. I was worried I spoiled something for you then. Um, no, no. Uh, yeah, because she's already been cast, and obviously she, you know, if you know the comics, um, she never actually did end up marrying her because DC are dicks, but she, the plan was for her to get married to Maggie Sawyer. Like, that was her love interest, and, and she loved her. And you could have her name on Toya... As the question, it would be the best. And, and Alice is one of the creepiest villains ever. Like, as a yeah. show, you know, like, the CW always have the show villain, uh, the season villain, you know, where this yeah. was in the background. Alice would be such a good season villain because it would be that thing where, like, where are all these villains coming from? They're all connected to this one person. And then, and they then, like, that. 
it, it, like midway through like the, the, the Christmas break you know the, the episode before the Christmas break is the first time she sees Alice and it's like really creepy and, and, and fucked up and Oh, I, I, I just I love Batwoman so much, and I'm so glad that we're getting we get we're finally getting some sort of Gotham action um, happening over at the CW. Um, do you have some some Comic Con stuff that you want to bring up anymore? Oh, there's so much, dude. There's so much, but I think that's basically all the stuff that I really cared about. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna rattle some stuff off. I'm not gonna talk much about any of them. If you want to jump in, jump in. I'll give one word descriptions of it. Okay, um, Doctor Who trailer. Cool. Yeah, cool. Nothing really showed. The only thing I picked up from it was uh, his sonic screwdriver is cooler. Like yellow, yellow's a cool color. Oh yeah, it's a, yeah. Um, uh, a Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Dope. Dope as fuck. I loved Kong. I thought Kong. I was... do. One oh. interesting thing. Um, I love Millie Bobby Brown. Yes. But I feel like they went to, someone went, watched Stranger Things, went to her and said, hey, we want you for this new Godzilla movie. And she's like, oh, cool. Do you want me to be like, like a scientist? Or she's like, no, 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 no. Just do the 11 thing again. <laughs> Maybe. That, that, could you just do that again? Because I got like a lot of vibes from that. The connection <laughs> between her and the monsters. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. She even has an evil parent. Just like in Stranger yeah, Things. And she has that like that screen, that guttural yeah. screen that just yeah. like she's too good at it. That's the problem. Yeah. Um I am a little bit sad that she got tight cast, but I adore what they're doing with the Monsterverse. And I think that Kong Skull Island, Jordan Vaught Roberts, he he really made such a fun film and I'm excited to see where that's gonna go. Obviously Kong's not gonna be in this one. He's he's waiting until the 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 fourth movie, but still very excited. Um, what else did we get? We got a trailer for um, Young Justice, which is one of my favorite animated shows of all time. I love Young Justice. Um, I didn't watch the trailer. I watched like ten minutes, of, uh, like ten seconds of it, and then I was like, I don't want to spoil the series for me, so I don't have anything to say about it. I'm just excited that it's happening. <laughs> Same. Yeah, I didn't really watch it. Um, I, I very much like Young Justice. I think that it's that Artemis is one of the where the fuck did this character come from? Like, yeah, right. Like, it's so cool. Like, that I knew nothing about her, and then all of a sudden, I watched two seasons of a an animated show, and she's like one of the best DC characters. Um, what else did we get? We got Fantastic Beasts. I didn't see the trailer. I so um, I, I am not. I can't. You're not excited for Fantastic Beasts? Too? No, no, because they fucked up, Cameron. They fucked up. Oh, are we talking about Dumbledore here? We're talking about Johnny Depp here. Oh. <laughs> ruining an entire... I, every time I see his face, A, I do not believe that's a man that Dumbledore would want to fuck. <laughs> Especially not Jude Law. <laughs> and B, he's a horrible person. So it just really just... It's one of those things where I'm like, I do, I do not want to support you guys thinking it's a smart idea to give this guy money. Yeah, oh, I don't know. It, it's it sucks, and also like I liked the first Fantastic Beast. It didn't like knock my socks off and make me want more. I don't think that Eddie Redmayne. He's a great actor, but he's. In, I get it. It's part of the character, but he just doesn't have a very commanding presence that like. Okay. Makes me pay attention a lot. I okay. more so like the side characters, and I liked him in that movie. Mm. Fair enough. That's fair. Um. Yeah, I, it's a it's a complicated situation. Um, I don't know how it's gonna go. I don't know if this is his last stint. As and also like Colin Farrell was like so good in the first movie. Either way, oh, ah, yeah. he was yeah. great in that first movie, and it would have just made sense. I wish it would have kept him, but I get yeah. it. Like for the reveal, <laughs> I, have, I just wish he would have chosen a different actor. I love the idea that he is like. His face like it's revealed, and he's got like white hair, and he's got the two different color eyes, but he's still the same dude. Yeah, <laughs> it was you, and it's like, how do you guys not recognize him? He looks exactly. The same. I just love that they literally spoil it at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> oh well, yeah, but it's foreshadowing. Like you don't know until until you no, see it, and then you put it. But together. they literally like well put it together, but it's like they use the haircut as a transition. 
And so it's like, oh, he's totally that guy, right? I didn't, I didn't put, I didn't not pick him on that. <laughs> I thought it yeah, was so literally, like you see the back of Grindelwald. No, and he yeah, has that weird, yeah. I I know what scene you're talking about because I went back and watched it and was like, oh, that's cool. They're foreshadowing it. But the first time I watched it, I didn't realize. I took that, that as, oh, is that who he's supposed to be? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and then at the end of the movie, I was like, why the fuck is he Johnny Depp? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, to be fair, they filmed the first one before all the shit went down, but the second one... Second one, 100% their choice. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Either way. Uh, what else have we got? Do we have anything else? I'm sure there's uh, lots of other stuff. Dude, we do you care cool... about the Glass trailer? Sorry? Do you care about the Glass trailer? Oh, 100%. Did you see Split? No. So oh. that's why I don't care. I saw okay. Unbreakable way back when, but I haven't seen Split, so that's why uh, I was like... Oh, okay. I love, I love Unbreakable. I think it's a great superhero film. I love Split. It's it's creepy. And the best thing about the Glass trailer uh, was that they brought back the main character from Split to be yeah. in this. She's like in it, and like she's not. She doesn't have any lines in the move in the trailer. But it's presumably because she's such a big part of Split. Like she's the main character. He's just the you know this creepy villain. Um, and he's cool in Split, but she was my favorite part because her backstory is fucked up and, and she's got this whole cool reason for being able to beat um, Jay McAvoy's character. Um, so the bringing her back was really cool. I think she's a really good actress um, for such a young person. You know, it's kind of like that Millie Bobby Brown thing where you're just like, how you have so much talent while also yeah. being so young. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited for Split. And uh, I mean, Sam Jackson's just just super fun. I love, I love Sam Jackson. He's a fun guy. Um... Gosh, we had lots of other stuff, a lot of comic book news. We've got um, Grant Morrison helming Green Lantern, which is an uh, interesting pairing. I feel like Grant Morrison doesn't even like Green Lantern. He was just like, who haven't I written? <laughs> well, yeah, but, like, I think Grant Morrison, like, did great with Green Lantern in JLA with Kyle Rayner. Oh, I yeah. don't need to see another, we're going to use Hal Jordan to explore anything. I mean, he's done. That's the problem yeah. with any new... With any new, oh, we got three jokers. There's a, there's a, we've got a, we've got a book, three jokers, exploring that kind of um, conspiracy theory that Batman has now that the Joker is actually three different people. Um, interesting. Interesting, yeah. but I really do feel like this is gonna be one of those things where in five years it's just gonna go back to normal. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, random one. Kelly Sue DeConnick's taking over Aquaman. Yeah, I, I saw love Kelly that. Sue, so I think that's gonna be great. I also saw the cover, which was like. He looks like a like like a, the prettiest he's ever been. <laughs> like, it was really weird. And he's supposed to be like a wash up on a deserted island with no memory, with all these other old forgotten sea gods. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's like the pitch, and I'm like, oh, that's that's really cool. That's great. Isn't it weird how and this has happened forever? Whenever a comic book movie comes out based on a character that has never had a movie before. The comic also just happens to be in the most confusing state ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so funny. It's like a trend. Like, wh when um, Green Lantern came out, the, the movie, we it was like... deep in, like, Blackest Night? Yeah. And, like, imagine watching the movie and being like, wow, this is cool, and then picking up Black Knight and feeling oh, like... Oh, it's like watching one of the Avengers movies and then being like, wait, Captain America's a Nazi? What? Yeah, exactly. Like, this happens all of the time. It's so... It's like a phenomenon. Like, the comics industry just doesn't want people to it's, pick up comics. It's almost like the movies um, aren't made to bring in new readers and that the yeah. reason um, it isn't where it used to be is because they don't uh, attempt to bring in new readers on their own. Oh, it's crazy. Um, I do think DC's doing a great thing with doing these. They're doing these, like, 100-page Walmart specials. Oh, Of, cool. like, digest books, like, that go inside Walmart. Oh, that's awesome. Walmart's whatever. So it's like, oh, that's that's actually, you're trying. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, we got a cool, we got some cool panels. Um, I'm sure there's some stuff that we've missed out that maybe we'll talk about in the next episode. Uh, but that's pretty much it, I think, from, from Comic-Con this year. Um... We got the James Gunn news, which I I don't know if I have the correct um, verbiage opinion? or time to comment on that situation. It's a yeah. situation, and it it's all good. It's for everyone involved. It's there's no right or wrong answers. I think that's that's probably the best way to put it. It's a very difficult and complicated situation. 
Um, I just like, especially during when these things happen, uh, I just try to absorb, you know, ideas and opinions. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, like I'm not in that situation or, you know, in any of these people or like they're anyone's head. So it's like, you just kind of have to figure it out on your own. Yeah. And I think that it, anyone who jumps up and be like, you know, this is, this is like, we talked about it, you know, off mic in personal and we were using language a lot where it was like, I don't know. This is kind of what I think, but I don't know. This is kind of, this yeah. is that. And I feel like that's how we should talk about it. It shouldn't be, I have all the answers, you know, cause I, uh, it's weird when I see people, a, lot of the, a lot of Twitter and the internet just becomes like, who's the first person to rush out and say, you know, their hot take or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, this is the truth. Not this is an opinion or this is what I think. Or, And I, I feel like this is what is making the situation even harder to discuss. Because if you go against the law that some random user has made up, all of a sudden, you know, you've broken the rules. <laughs> you know? But, but let's, not, let's not dwell on that too much. Um, I'm sure Marvel will survive. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, let's, let's, let's slip into the topic. Let's, let's take some time to do a topic. We've talked a lot about stuff that's happened, a lot about news, a lot about shows we've watched, because we have some interesting topics. Um, and you are very prepared for one of these topics. Which one is this? Because I want to do the one that you're most excited for. I am prepared time. for your topic. Okay. My topic is just kind of like, I have a couple sentences. That's it. This Cameron, if I am fibbing, take a rib out of me and just use it to stab me in the eye, brother. All right. <laughs> Oh my god. I got a page of notes, baby. Printing them out. You can hear the paper. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> so what is your topic, Cameron? I was wondering, uh, as I have recently returned from um your previous employment uh, uh employers is uh, land. Mickey Mouse, of course. You were employed <laughs> by Mickey world. Mouse. Thank you. Yes. Um you know, and I'm sure you ended your relationship am amicably. Um, Very I amicably. went to I went to Mickey Mouse's house, um, Disney Disney World in Florida, and uh, I also went to other places. I went to Sea World. I went to uh, Discovery Cove and Universal and stuff. But but the main point is that you used to work at uh, Disney World. I went there recently. I had a thoroughly enjoyable time, and at the parks my brother and i were talking a lot about what is maybe missing from the parks you know different things that we would do if we were in charge and ultimately the discussion became if you were going to make a theme park what would you going to base it around and we had a lot of discussions a lot of fun chats um and i was wondering about your ideas because you are the only person i know who's worked in the industry and, and know the ins and outs and are probably bored of a lot of things that that are like cliches um so john i want to ask you what you would build your theme park around but i want to go first because i feel like you thought your idea out a lot and i want to enjoy that and i'm just gonna say mine because it's not super thorough I was very impressed by mine until I heard about notes and heard the flipping of pages. <laughs> so, so if you don't mind, do you mind if I go first? Uh, I do not mind. Do not bury your idea. Don't bury the okay. lead. I'm not okay. burying it. I'm and impressed. it's one page. It's not pages. It's just okay. one. Okay. I like slowly shredding pages. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so my idea is kind of would never make any money because it's so vague. And like for what I learned from going to Disney is like – you gotta have a theme, you know. You gotta really hit that theme, and that to be, and it's gotta be, it's gotta be woven. Um, and to be honest, I think Disney are getting worse at it. I think they're really stretching in recent years. Like <laughs> they don't really know where to put rides, and they're like, like I love Pandora. It was a magical experience, and it blew my dick off. But is it it's Animal Kingdom? It's a weird Kingdom? spot. It's a weird spot, man. <laughs> anyway, um, my idea was Sci-Fi Land. So the idea of it is like it takes one section of of magic kingdom tomorrowland um and kind of the it, it's the whole park 
So instead of having, you know, which is generally, if you have a theme park and you have like sci-fi theme, it's like one section of the park. But yeah. I want a whole theme park. I want a whole giant theme park with lots of different lands, but every single land is sci-fi. And the idea is, is that we buy a bunch of franchises. We buy the rights to a bunch of franchises and we try to like coax people in who like just love the genre you know and like uh, uh, you, you kind of like moving from franchise to franchise but you're say, are you getting like flash gordon like some flash... pulpy era stuff or like i want to kind of so my idea was to kind of stick with uh, consistent 70s and 80s sci-fi because okay. even though there's a lot of differences in the aesthetics. They kind of fit together like, like, like you know, puzzle pieces. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and I was thinking of 70s and 80s, not just because, well, probably just subconsciously because it's my favorite era of sci-fi, <laughs> but also because, like, the architecture. So if you if you picture it, you've got, like, the main hub world, which can't be branded. That was, like, a mistake um, that I think a lot of people make is, like, having a hub world that is branded because then it's, like, you're making favorites, you know? Disney yeah. do it really well because they'll always have a hub world that, yes, there are, you know, like, Animal Kingdom, for example, it's not Bugs Life is the hub world. It's the Tree of Life that just so happens to have Bugs Life in it, you know? And then you've got, like, Magic Kingdom. Yes, it's, what is it, Rapunzel's Castle? No. Um, so Magic Kingdom, like Walt Disney World, is Cinderella's castle. Yes, but because it's just a castle, you're not like, oh, you know, your favorite, you know, it's just a castle, you know, and you just yeah. like, you can go from there. So my hub world would be kind of like Tomorrowland. It's like an unbranded kind of like, it's a spaceport. And the idea is, is each of these lands is a different planet that you're going to. So the idea is, is like, you're in a spaceport and then you choose which planet do you want to go to. And I really like what they're doing with Star Tours where you can take a ride. Obviously, Star Wars Land isn't open yet. But how it is going to work, I've been told, is you take Star Tours and then you get off Star Tours and all of a sudden you're in Star Wars Land. So I like the idea of, of taking a ride to get into a land. And then optionally, yeah. you can just walk there. You don't have to take a ride. So in the space port there would be it's such a cool idea in my head there would be this this spaceport that is all very uniform but there are these five big different looking ships right and they've all got lines obviously and there's there's like a gift shop next to them but they're these huge ships and they're all really weirdly different looking not matching because each of these five ships is from a very specific franchise. So, like, one of the ships is you've got a ship from Blade Runner. You know, maybe it's a cargo freighter or something like that. And then you get on the ship from Blade Runner and you go on, like, a ride. Maybe it's a virtual reality ride or something. And you get off and all of a sudden you're in um, Los Angeles. You're in da like, you're in Los Angeles in 2029. It's Blade Runner. And it's like you've got Blade Runner rides. You've got Blade Runner gift shops. But the whole thing, it's always raining. You have, like, sprinklers <laughs> to make it so that it's always raining. They give out free, like... Um, so in Blade Runner... Um, you haven't seen Blade Runner, John, have you? you no, I saw it. Yeah? Okay, so it's fine. Um, I just hit you forever. No. <laughs> <laughs> you need to watch it and then be like, meh, to piss me off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In Blade Runner, they have these, um, uh, they're not even a part of the plot, they're just cool set dressing. They're these big, imagine like a big um, uh, uh, fluorescent tube, like going up, almost like a, uh, like a long light bulb you'd get in like an office, you know, a big fluorescent yeah. light bulb. Going up and then it's, but it's actually just the stick of an umbrella. So you've got the umbrella on top which is completely see-through. It's it's like plastic. It's see-through plastic. But the stick of the umbrella is a glowing light, you know? Uh -huh. okay. So everyone would get, get given these because it would be always raining. So you'd have to, like, protect them. But they, you, they give them up for free. And then when you get, you know, when you leave Blade Runner Land, they take them off you. But you could buy them and keep them. But these would be, like, special. You know, we're kind of like Harry Potter Land where you can, like, get ones. Yeah. Um, and as you go through Blade Runner Land, every, all the cast members would be dressed as, like, they'd be dressed in trench coats. And you could buy, like, Chinese food from the street just like in Blade Runner. Right? And then you get you get back on the ship. You fly back to the space hub. And then you can get on, like, the Nostromo from Alien. You get on the Nostromo. Oh, okay. And then this is, like the haunted mansion you know version of, okay, of yeah. my land so like even though it's all sci-fi there are sub-genres so when you go to alien land it's like horror there's like a haunted house but it's not a haunted house it's like a haunted spaceship and you're going around and the yeah. xenomorph is chasing you and that's like the scary part of my park 
and then there will be like I can't buy the rights to Star Wars because Disney already have it. So there would be like a Star Trek part, and that would be like the one for kids. You know, that would be like yeah. Kids Land because it would be like fun and it would be like lighthearted there wouldn't be any scary aliens they would all just have like weird fun big years and shit um and there would be like a dark ride like there would be no drops or anything it would just be like you'd be on like you'd be going through uh like different like biospheres and maybe spock yeah. is there talking to you and that would be like kind of the chill you know the the not not upsetting, you know. The the seas it's hot outside. Friends. You want to go inside somewhere? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Um, and maybe they have like an aquarium at the end, like in uh, the sea with Nemo and friends. But instead of an aquarium with real like fish and stuff, it's all like animatronics, and they look like like oh, you know, yeah. they're alien stuff. And that was rebels cool. and or whatever. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Yeah. And then you would have another one that would be kind of like the the thrill seekers. And I'm trying to figure out which this would be because there's a lot of different potential franchises you could pull from like you've got like the running man or you can go for like um if you want to get like really like broad with it you could go to like some animes like you go to yeah. akira like that's technically a sci-fi you can go like ghost oh, in yeah. the shell like cowboy uh, bebop in there yeah like they could be totally like something like that like you could get on you know bebop's um plane the bebop and, and... is the name of the Oh, yeah, of course it is, yeah. Uh, you could get on Bebop and it would take you to, like... Uh, I don't know about Bebop because that kind of clashes my, with my next idea. But uh, So the Thrill Seeker one is undecided. Uh, yeah. Originally, it was going to be Star Wars, but I feel like I can't just steal the idea from Disney. I mean, this is magic. Yeah, and this also, is magic. my idea okay. is 100% something that's happening. But I don't <laughs> yeah, think do it. I, I saw about that. Um, okay, fair enough. We're going with Star Wars. So the adventure part is Star Wars. You get in the Millennium Falcon... You fly over to um, just one of the planets, maybe Hoth or something. But that's like the adventure. There's like roller coasters and you're going through yeah. like like the you you're like on the um, speeder bikes, you know, from from Endo, and it's like a roller coaster, kind of like the Tron coaster that's coming to Tomorrowland, yeah. like where you're like lying down frontwards. And then the next land was, I was like, what does every like theme park parody have? And it's always there's always a Western land. There's <laughs> always a western land. So I was like, what's more perfect than Firefly? You would board oh. you would board Serenity and it would take you to like the Wild West and then if I could get away with it, there's like prostitutes walking around. <laughs> 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 they're not actually prostitutes, but they're like in character. And like you would do like a Wild West, you'd do like shootouts, like you know, like they they'd pay like a, a quarter and they would give you a gun, you'd shoot targets and stuff, and it would be like it would just be like Western. And, and yeah. I think that would be kind of like, because I thought, how could I make every genre that is in every theme park, you know, the, the lands that all have genres, while also still being sci-fi? And I think you yeah. can pull it off because sci-fi is quite broad. It's like superhero, you know, there's, you can fit everything. There's a lot there. under that umbrella. Yeah. And I just love the idea of that sport, space port, you know, where it's yeah. like, ah, oh, shit, there's so many, so much potential. You can go well, to so and many it makes different sense places. for how, you know, how you're getting to these other areas and how mm. you're, transporting to these other places you know yeah so that's my thought, idea i was gonna say did you think about entertainment um i would think are you that... doing a fireworks show are you doing i would because because there's kind of a cool i didn't notice it as a kid but as an adult you kind of notice this cool like formula disney have where you have to have a certain amount of like live shows a certain amount of virtual reality rides a certain amount of roller coasters in each park you know they kind of have to hit the quarter yeah. um so i'm thinking like of the five lands there'd maybe be like three that would have like live shows and then the other two might have like uh specific like maybe not fireworks but light shows and then yeah. there would be a fireworks show in in like the middle in the center where it would be like yeah at the spaceport to basically yeah. hey everyone go home yeah, <laughs> I I did experience that. I'll, we got to get into some Florida stories soon, but uh, uh, but that was good fun. I, I I went to see the Star Wars fireworks. And oh, those end, are nice. Everyone was those like, are nice. "Dude, get out!" <laughs> <laughs> so that was my idea. I, I I kind of had fun with it, and I really enjoyed uh, and kind of putting together what I starting to see the formula of what Disney use and yeah. what Universal use. You know. <clears throat> Oh gosh, here we go. I want you to just sit back and relax, Cameron okay. Pasadena okay. Morris. 
I want you to just let your imagination take over. It's running wild. Yeah, it's what's well, going to be happening in jumping. Okay. Okay. Because we're going to Nintendo Land. Yeah. All right. I know this is a thing that's happening, but they're not going to do it how I'm going to do it. So. Well, they're not doing it. Nintendo Land. They're just doing a part of the park, right? Yeah. I'm like doing. The... I want like a Magic Kingdom size park all yes. Nintendo. Nice. So the beginning of the park is you're entering the Mushroom Kingdom. So you're going to go through, like, you know how, like, when you're entering Magic Kingdom, there's those two, like, tunnels? Oh, yes, yes, through the train. So those are going to be shaped like the warp pipes, like the green warp pipes. (laughs) And it'd be cool if they did a little, like, whoop, 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 but I don't, that might be too much, but. Every single person. Because people annoyed with it. (laughs) (laughs) But that would be fun. Um, So you're entering the Magic Kingdom, or sorry, the Mushroom Kingdom. Ooh, that was close. Entering the Mushroom Kingdom, you got the warp pipe tunnels. Um, There's, like, some shops. You know, it's kind of like Main Street USA when nice. you're entering the Magic Kingdom. There are shops on the side. You've got, like, Toad Shop. You know, all the people are kind of dressed like Toads. Oh, like Captain uh, Toads. Got, like, yeah, like yeah, Captain yeah. Toad and stuff. You've got Mario's Workshop on the right, nice. which is kind of where you go to meet, like, Mario and, like, Luigi and Princess Peach and, you know, all of them. Um, I had this idea because, you know, have you seen, like, the Magic Bands? Oh, dude, me! I, I have so much I want to talk about. But this shit changed my life. It was amazing. It They're was so great. good. So I wanted to do like a Sheikah band Ooh. instead of your Sheikah slate. You have a Sheikah band, Ooh. and so on the walls <laughs> there will be like <laughs> mystery cubes from Mario, oh, and you damn. put it up against the wall, and you see like either a video or like a little game pops up. Um, I also had this idea of having like an app that goes with the park. Um, that's kind of like a Pokemon Go style, like you have a little avatar and it's walking around the park, whatever. Oh, wow, and whenever cool. you signed into one of these things, you could either gain like you gained experience on your little app, or you gained like you checked into the Mushroom Kingdom. Here's Mario's hat, and then you could put Mario's hat on your little person. So the whole like while you're walking around the park, it's a game as well. It's like an Nintendo yeah. game as well as being oh, that's cool. Um, and then there are microtransactions if you just want to buy outfits and stuff like that. Cause, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got to make so that money. you got to back up the yeah, brings truck. you got to make that money. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the centerpiece of, the, you know, is a giant castle. The front half of the castle is Peach's castle. Oh. So you've got some stained glass windows that are like Peach and Mario, and it's like, you're at Peach's castle, which is great. There's a little stage where, like, stage shows are going to happen, whatever. Yeah. Um, the back half of the castle oh, is shit. Zelda's castle. Hyrule so basically, Castle. basically, Hyrule Castle. I don't think that the architecture would change much, but just, like, little things in the windows mm. and stained glass would be stained glass on the back. So the back half, you're in Hyrule Kingdom. Oh, uh, so you've got shops where you can buy wooden swords and shields. You know, you can dress like Link and Zelda. Mm. Uh, you've got this ride called Zelda Stables, which is a carousel ride. Pretty simple. Oh, nice, nice. You've got an, indio- an indoor theater show where Link has, like, lost his memories and the champions have to come together to help him regain his memories <laughs> so they can defeat Ganon. <laughs> uh, you got a water ride where Link meets the Zoras. Um, so it's like a little water ride where he meets the water tribe of people or oh, whatever. Oh, like a Splash Mountain type situation. Yeah, exactly. Or, like, nice. kind of like Small World, but, like, not as... Like, there's a Small World location, but not, like, more like a Splash Mountain type ride. Okay, cool, cool. Like a blend between got, the two. Yeah, and then you've got... um. A roller coaster with the Goron, um, which is like oh. kind of like Expedition Everest, Seven Doors Mine Train. Nice. You've got like this giant monster, and then you realize that he's like actually friendly and your friend. Um, yeah. He doesn't scare the shit out of you like the yeah. fucking yeah, he did me. <laughs> and then you've got um, a meet and greet area, obviously, to make Link, Zelda, and some of the champions. Then, oh, nice. um, are you, got... are you leaning on Breath of the Wild right now, or is it going to be a lot of different... I'm things? leaning on Breath of the Wild hard right okay, now, because that's okay. the only one I really played. I played some of Wind Waker. I played a lot of Wind Waker, actually, but this is mm. the first one that I fully got committed to the lore. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, we've got the front half of the castle and the back half of the castle. Now we're going to move to the left side of the park. Okay. So think your Adventureland Frontierland, Liberty Square area. Mm, mm, haunted Mansion um, situations ago. Yeah. So you've got a Donkey Kong area. Nice. Um, it's tropical, you know, you have a barrel water ride, so you, like, get into, they're, like, you know, these big circular things, like tubes, but they look like barrels. Oh, awesome. Like, uh, like Kilimanjaro Falls. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so you meet, you can meet 
Diddy and Daisy Kong and Donkey Kong, all the Kong family. You know, what obviously. Was, uh, what's the grandpa? I can't remember his name. Um, Cranky Kong, I think. Cranky right? Kong. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've also got a big treehouse that's like you know their home, kind of like the Swiss Family Treehouse because I love oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. Walk yeah. Up, you can like look at stuff and see things, and then also use your band to like interact with some of the, I uh, some of the things in there. Nice. Um, and then they also have banana splits. So that's like the main, <laughs> the main reasons people go over there is like, oh man, I want one of the banana splits. It's like the dough, <laughs> like exactly. Yeah. Um, and then so after that, we got a Kirby area. Oh yes. This I never thought you were gonna mention my favorite not a Nintendo super character. Big area, but it's got like a spinning star ride. Hmm. You know, and it's got like a lot of food. This is the place that you go to to like, all right, we're just like gonna kind of chill out, like. Maybe there's, like, some grassy area or whatever and, like, some, like, toys or whatever. But it's not really, like, a big it's like rock. the size of, like, the, the... What's the Barnstormer area called in Disney? Cir- yeah, Storybook Circus. It's exactly yeah. like that size. Um, cool. So then we've got our futuristic world. Ooh. This has an F-Zero racetrack. Oh, damn. It's got a Space Mountain ride that's Star Fox themed. Oh, that would be rad. So you're getting in the... The things and like Slippy's talking to you and then you vroom, go and it's like a thrill ride. Um, like then right you've got the a, like, do a barrel roll. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got a Metroid Buzz Lightyear ride. Oh, so it's like nice. you're Samus and you're like in this and you're shooting little Metroids everywhere. Um, that works pretty obviously. well, actually. Yeah, right? And then a meet and greet area where you can meet like Samus or um, Fox or Falco or whoever, mm. you know, or Captain Falcon. Um, and then you've got just a space hub food area. Like generic sci-fi, you mm. go in there and just kind of yeah. eat. I like Cosmic Rays. Oh then, yeah, yeah, I get you saying. Yeah, who's For the performer? The though? Oh ooh, yeah, I did not think about that. Oh. <laughs> it would be really good to like dig deep and find like a Nintendo alien you could put up who like yeah, just right. sings and talks to you. And <laughs> oh, that'd be great. So the entertainment, we've got a parade that happens in the afternoon that has like all the Nintendo characters dancing through the street. They've got big floats. Nice. You know, they kind of give you a general idea of like, oh, this is who they are. Um, there's a stage show in front of Peach's Castle that is uh, Mario and his Nintendo friends uh, are throwing a birthday party for Peach. Oh, that's nice. I, so I thought you were going like, to be like, Nint- Mario and all his friends decide to fight each other and it becomes no. Smash. <laughs> oh, no, I wish. But it's like, oh, hey, like, hey, Link. Hey, Zelda. How's it going? Yeah. Oh, hey, you're for uh, Peach's birthday party. Oh, that's great. And it's kind of like, okay, cool. Like, these are all the people you're going to be seeing, like. Throughout the park, so yeah. get excited. Um, and then I wanted to do because I love Phantasmic. Oh yes, Hollywood. I saw that. Yes, show. That's my yeah. favorite show. Um, but with the layout of my park, I don't really think I could fit a big stadium with a water show. So mm. uh, I'm just gonna do a normal nighttime fireworks show. Showcases all your favorite uh, Nintendo characters and you know their music and stuff like that. Oh damn. Damn. I like the full kind of prong attack you've got going, where it's like yeah. you're always circling the Hyrule slash Peach's Castle. Yeah, because um, I was like, oh, which castle is more recognizable? And Peach's Castle probably is, which is why it's the front. Um, but I wanted to also, because that was one thing I always annoyed me, which is just like, oh, this is only one person's castle? Like, that's just weird. This is Cinderella's mm, castle. Yeah. Um, other parts have done, like, I think in Tokyo Disney or whatever, they have Storybook Castle which is what it's called, which is like oh, cool. castle. But so I like the idea of just doing the half and half. Well, I like also, the... There's not a lot of famous, like all the other princesses are tangentially related to either Peach or Zelda, so... Yeah, and I think that one of the most... You know, I've been there a couple of times, but the time I came, I went recently, you know, it was the first time I went as an adult and I was able to like take things in more. One of the weirdest areas of Magic Kingdom, and I'm not even like making a joke, it was just genuinely like weird, was behind the castle. Behind yeah. Cinderella's castle, there's just nothing. <laughs> it's just like kind of there's 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 like stuff near, but you just yeah. kinda of go through and you expect to look back, but it's just the back of a castle, you know? Yeah, Whereas, that's why like, I wouldn't have it where you could walk through the castle. Mm. Um It would be just I, too because yeah. you at all angles every angle you're looking at the castle there's always something cool to look at whereas yeah, I'd like when you're looking at the glass on it or... 
Yeah. And like when the fireworks were happening, we were on the barnstorm and the fireworks were about to happen. And I was like, well, we'll just watch it here. And they're like, no, 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 you won't be able to see anything from the back of the castle. I'm like, well, why don't they just double up? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. That's why so I like the stage show better. But I'm like, ah, oh, I just, I mean, it, it could probably like in this imaginary world fit somewhere. But, you know, I like stage shows better because you're in a theater. You could just sit down yeah. and watch it. And then I like the, because fireworks get boring and it's just pop, 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 pop. Mm. All, all night long. And it's like, <laughs> I like this, the water. And like, I have this idea for the stage show of like, Ganon is teaming up, or it'd be Bowser. Bowser's teaming up with Ganon and King DDD, you know, to like defeat the Nintendo heroes or whatever. <laughs> you could totally do like a. Have you played much Smash? Oh, yeah. You know, um, what's it called? Something Hand. The Master Hand. The Master Hand. So, like, you know how in Fantasia, Fantasmic, what's it called? What's yeah, it Fantasma. Called? In Fantasmic. There's like this entity who's taking over all the villains. You know, it's like morphing yeah. into all the different villains. Um, you could do that with with um, with Master Hand. Like he's I becoming all of the that. Nintendo villains. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I don't like, know. That I was like the that. coolest part. I like of that idea. Yeah. I don't like the fireworks so much. But yeah, so that. Oh my lord! Uh, but I just like the idea of like giving you things to do, like not just with the park, but like. Yeah, like, with the actual, like, architecture mm. of the park and with the, like, areas and stuff. With, like, the app and the, like, little magic band thing, whatever. It would, because the magic bands really encourage you to, like, do things. And and every time I went somewhere that didn't have a magic band station or didn't have some kind of magic band interaction, I was disappointed. And I realized it was because, like, it was my favorite part of, like... It, it made me feel the most like I was there, you know? Yeah. Like, actually being bing. I'd like, like to have, like, different things going on. So, like, you if you go right behind someone, you're not going to get the exact same thing. Mm, yeah. Like, you might 100%. get a message from a character or, like, a little, like, video game or, like, some, like, oh, you gain, like, this, like, random, I don't know, toad thing or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and it would be cool because you could, like, really make it so that people want to go back to places that they've already yeah. been and really like try it again you know like the first time i did it you know i i hit this block and i got like like a donkey kong thing and like i like donkey kong but i prefer you know fox i prefer like the sci-fi place uh, characters so then they go well maybe i'll go over to the sci-fi world and there's a higher chance that i'll get a sci-fi character and then they go in there and it's kind of like like the perfect idea for a nintendo park is to make people feel like they're still playing a nintendo game while they're yeah. at the park you know which just sounds cool um it, it, funny enough i i'm i'm interested that probably because you already know that they are making this but i'm interested that you didn't go for a um a mario kart ride because that's that's like I the had big thought one about it so hard but i realized with how i want to lay out the park yeah mario is our mickey mouse he is our mascot yeah. And normally, except for recently, there aren't many rides that are just Mickey Mouse. No, there yeah, aren't you're Mickey right. Mouse rides. They just recently started making one. So I was like, I think I want to use this opportunity to give lesser known because you'll get your fill. If you want to meet Mario, you can meet Mario. Mario's going to be on the stage show. Mm. I don't think Mario's going to, you're going to have all the shops and all the stuff if you want to buy all the Mario stuff. But I really want it to be like, it's almost like, this is interesting. I didn't think about this. It's almost like what happens when you start getting into Nintendo and getting into video games. You start with Mario. Yeah. Then you go, maybe you go to straight to Link. Maybe you go to Donkey Kong. Yeah. Oh, Donkey Kong. He, he, I, th- I think I've seen him in Mario Kart, whatever he looks. Oh, okay. Oh, Cur- oh yeah. Kirby's there too. Yeah. Was, oh, and then you get deep into Legend of Zelda. A lot of stuff in there. And then you go like, oh, and then you go to the weird, like, oh, what's the weird sci-fi? Like, Captain Falcon's always been cool, and like Smash Brothers, and like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. so it's like a weird, like, I don't know, telling a story of like video games through a park, which well, I never. That's cool, I dude. Like, I get that shit, man. That's that's awesome. I think, I think that's really cool. Um, I did want to mention because you threw it out there. This is completely unrelated, but Mickey's Runaway Train is repl- it replaced my favorite ride. Oh. And- I know. I was there when we were left. It was sad. I was there was a guy it. there. There was a guy who was giving me directions, and he was like, "Yeah, you just go straight past the great movie ride." Oh, so, sorry. No, that, that's gone now. And I was like, "Yeah." And he looked at me, and he's like, "Yeah." 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, it's a sad day. Sorry, sorry, not to derail your story. I just that genuinely like more show than it should upset me because that <laughs> ride it touched me like in a way that like rides don't. Yeah. Because I was like, I felt like I was there, like I was in the alien bit, which I. Like may this maybe have spurred me to put Alien Land in mind because I remember <laughs> that bit of that ride so well when you go yeah. through and you see her and she's terrified and then the xenomorph comes down. Dude, I love theme parks. Theme parks are the most magical place in the world, dude. If you can build a good theme park, you've got me. Like yeah. I I and and like not throwing any shade, but SeaWorld, you need to start your game up. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> This has been really good. We talked a lot about Comic Con. We got really deep into the theme park stuff. Yeah, we were quite on topic and quite concise. Um, and I just want to say before we wrap up, um, I'll give John the the final words because I just want to say something that's really important to me. Um, where the fuck are the Raven eyes? Like, how hard is it <laughs> to CG four eyes on a? Okay, John, John, you take it away. <laughs> Clear eyes. Open hearts. Never say die. Is that, is that a lyric <laughs> from Sonic the Hedgehog? Oh, I think part of it is like uh, from Friday Night Lights, I think. But, yeah, oh, I don't know. okay. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, well, bye, guys. <laughs> we will talk to you later. <laughs>